five, and then all of a sudden it starts getting up to six, and now I'm losing money on every gallon of gas. So that's not a good solution. So what the government has said is, you bid your best price, whatever your best price is, and if the price fluctuates up or down by some percentage, we'll renegotiate that price as a way to protect you from losing money on every gallon of gas you sell and protecting the government from paying an extraordinarily high price when your price when your cost is actually down. So that's what EPA is all about. Another contract type is cost reimbursable. So this is where um, the government looks at your invoice and your invoice has all your costs identified. And for each of those costs, the government checks three things. Anybody remember what we check for costs? Reasonable. Reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I usually got my paper bundle on my cheat sheet. Reasonable. Um, so it, the three things are reasonable, allocable, and allowable. Mm -hmm. Right? So we said um, reasonable if you charge $1.29 for a pen versus, uh, for a big pen versus giving everybody on your contract $129 uh, for a, um, or buying everybody a $129 Mont Blanc pen, that's not reasonable, right? Because our prudent business person hat says $1.29 for a big pen is reasonable for everybody on our contract, but $129 for a pen for everybody isn't reasonable. So that's reasonable. Second one is allowable. Remember we said uh, if I go out and have a scotch at lunch and try to charge the government for that scotch, is that allowable? But it makes for such a happier employee. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's on like the repeal of prohibition day, which it's already passed. Here, no. <laughs> <laughs> so by regulation, alcohol is not allowable. And then we said by contract, the contract can be make certain things unallowable. So that's what allowable is. And allocable, um, if we split the room in half. Half of us are working on government contracts, half of us are working on commercial contracts. The price of these lights, how should it be allocated? Half and half. Not charge the government 100% of the lights and charge your commercial customers more. So those are the three things they look at when it comes to our costs. Um, in a cost plus fixed fee, uh, they pay the contractor a certain negotiated fee. So remember we talked about if I, if I um, pay my employee $50 an hour, is that the price I give to the government? What do I add to that? Overhead, overhead, G&A, FECOM, and then, um, then we, we take all our numbers and we, I negotiate with the government a certain profit margin, and we take that profit margin and we negotiate, we figure out, um, we take that percentage, like if it's a 10% profit margin, we convert that to a dollar amount, and that's the amount that stays from the um, And then completion. So we have to decide in a cost reimbursable contract, the government gives us a requirement, and we come back with the labor categories we've proposed and the number of hours for each one of them. Any questions on cost reimbursable? You'll see this a lot. Okay, we're talking about all the allowable costs. Um, another contract type is an incentive contract. So what the government's trying to do here is, um, let's say they have a really critical project. So let's say they want to put a brand new job course center in um, Abbott. And they want to get this up and running by the end of the year. And normally it takes like a good solid year to get this done. They could put a contract in place where they will pay the contractor a certain incentive to go above and beyond to get this thing done by December. So if you get it done by December, you get the incentive. If you don't get it done by December, you don't get the incentive. So that's another contract type that they can use. Time and materials. This allows the government to purchase supplies or services um, on two, two different bases. One is the direct labor hours at a fixed hourly rate, so that's what we just talked about. You take the labor rate, you add your overhead, G&A, uh, FECOM, and profit, and that becomes your price. Um, and then any materials that you're buying. So if I need, um, if you want me to come in and install um, a training room, I'm going to give you the cost of my labor to put all this stuff together. But the price of this desk 
or the price of the AV system or any materials that I need to do the work will just be reimbursed based on actual cost. So I'll give you the cost from the subcontractor what they're charging me and I'll send it to you. It provides no positive profit incentive to the contractor for cost control or labor efficiency. You're going to pay me for every hour I work. So there's nothing that encourages me to do it in um, three hours rather than five hours. Because if I do it in five hours, you're going to pay me for five hours worth of work. There's nothing that incentivizes me to go down to three, which is why the government tries to shy away from this. Um, they do require um, the contract, the government has to watch what I'm doing um, to make sure that I'm not overcharging them for, you know, that I'm not just, okay, well, I have to put this table together, so I'm just going to do it as slowly as possible because then they're going to pay me more money for that. Letter contracts. Um, so the example I gave you this morning where if a contracting officer tells me it's okay to uh, do work for them without a contract uh, or the program manager tells me I'll do it from the contracting officer, that's when we get into this letter contract notion. So it's basically a brief summary of what the final contract is going to look like. Um, so it, it's used when the government's interest I would demand that the contractor be doing binding commitments so that work can start immediately. So if the government has a crisis, they might go to a letter contract. Um, and we don't have time to negotiate a definitive contract. But once you have these letter contract in place, uh, you have to get it finalized. They call it definitized within 180 days. Um, or before completion of 40% of the work. So this is a, a newer requirement that's been added to letter contracts because company, the example I gave you this morning, where they were going on for years before they got to finitize. So there's uh, FAR regulations now that are in effect. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is this notion of color of money. And what that means is money is um, designated for certain purposes, and um, they have to select the appropriate clause that matches the type of money. So multi-year money means that um, the government has received a certain amount of money from OMB for this requirement, and it extends over government fiscal year. So if they enter into a five-year contract with you, then they will have multi-year money, and it will be your contract will be funded for every year of the contract. Now, they could decide that it's a three-year contract with two, year, two option years. In which case they would they decide after year three, do they want to continue to work with you for year four? And at the end of year four, do they want to work with you for year five? But they that money is available for the duration. Annual funding expires at the end of the year at which it's appropriated. So um, uh, at the the ideal situation is on October first, the government is fully funded. That's what the ideal situation is. Ask any contracting officer, they love fully funded years. But a lot of contracting officers are not dealing with fully funded years. What are you dealing with? Hot checks. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing resolutions, yeah. right? And what that means is that I can only, sp instead of spending money for the entire year, I can only spend it till February. So I'm only giving, so I'm, I'm basically doling it out in small amounts to yeah. contractors which means more work for the contracting officers because it's not just one contract action to fund the whole year. They have to keep doing all these incremental, and you're not the only contractor they're dealing with. They're dealing with you know, hundreds of others. So it's a lot of extra work on the government's behalf. How do contractors feel about continuing resolution money? Why don't we like it? Well, because you, you people don't know. And so, you know, if we're trying to do like an installation, we may not be getting enough money for you from you to be able to put the whole thing in place. So it becomes a pain on our part too. And then one of the other things that happens, and I can speak to this personally, is when the government went through their shutdown, the government employees, what happened after the government reopened? Backlog. I'm sorry? We had a backlog of uh, backlog all the of things work. that still needed to happen. Plus it wasn't, we didn't have a full workforce that came back. So we only had parcel. And, and what happened to your salary? Well, you have to wait until everything gets processed through NFC, and then so you're pretty much out of money until everything gets paid up. And it'll come in waves, so you may get paid for a month, 
and then maybe for two weeks and the, until it catches up. Right. But did you hear the word he used? Maybe. Catches up. Or maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, catches up. Because I, I, yeah. doesn't every government employee get paid for eventually. back pay? Yeah, but eventually, eventually. But it still happens. Yes. Yeah. Contractors do not. Do yeah. not. So things that I was supposed to do for the government during the shutdown didn't happen, did not get paid for any of that stuff. <coughs> so contractors don't have that same guarantee that we're going to get. There, there's no, even though the money is there and it's been funded, you still don't get it when you're not working, when the government's shut down. Just keep in mind. Um, the government has to, uh, when the government actually contracts with you, they have to have the money available to use for this. So in other words, they can't say, okay, I'm going to get you started today, and uh, I don't have funding yet, but uh, I should have funding within the next month or two. They can't do that. So everything that they, when they give you a contract, they have the means of paying you the price is stated in the contract. And then the last is no year. So um, there's funding out there that has no expiration date specified. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, when they're when they're running the competition, they have to make sure. I keep saying that they have to have at least three, right? So that's how they can do a firm fixed price evaluation because they're evaluating three different companies who are looking at the same set of requirements and pricing the deal, right? So they they need to understand when they're going to do a procurement. And this is through market research. Are they going to get at least three companies? In the case of Y2K, when they did their market research, they realized nobody was going to step up to this, so they, they couldn't do it that way. Um, they have to um, use the required sources. So one of the required sources, we talked about the federal prison industries, Ability One with the blind and challenged people, um, current surplus, and then they're told to go to the GSA schedule because that means they won't have to run a whole brand new procurement. So, you know, if you can get on a GSA schedule, that's, that's the reason why you're pushing towards that. Um, they also look at what the capabilities are across the industry and um, to make sure that they can roll out, uh, making sure that they have the avail availability or, of commercial items instead of non-developmental items. We talked about all the sources of supply. Sometimes other agencies have access, so they go to them. They have inventories, they have these different stock programs, this is where GSA is, DLA, the DIPS program we're talking about, mandatory federal supply schedules for things like cell service and um, electricity. Okay. And look at that. Just in time. Can you open the door and see if there's questions back there? I think so. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a break for lunch and we'll pick